Hi, Jeff Bailey here. Laurie and I are back from what seems like a whirlwind trip to Nepal, reflecting on our time, going through the big city, getting in and out of Kathmandu, flights that didn't show up, that finally showed up. You know, ultimately traveling this way teaches you a lot of patience and a lot of resilience. You just have to go with the flow. One point I wanted to make was my gratitude for just being able to be there and help these people, mostly, as you'll hear me talk about, with knee pain and back pain. And the fact that I was able to share such poignant work with them instead of a bunch of exercises and strenuous kinds of things, because more strain and more strenuous activity is not what they needed. And it wouldn't really resonate with them, I don't think. And so just sharing the beauty of the Avita practice that really matched their character, their lifestyle, and I think met the wish or want that they had to remedy some pain. So enjoy this video and see if some of these ideas come through for you as well. Hey there, it's day two and a half from Taksindu, Nepal. And Taksindu is uh, known for the Taksindu Monastery. And today, we had the monks coming through and overall as a medical community here a medical team we saw 280 people between myself and one other yoga teacher here gretchen we probably saw 60 people it's very well organized there's a big long line of people they basically truck people in from up to four or five six hours away in jeeps they're all crammed in jeeps and it is a very rocky road getting up here we're happy to say that we didn't turn anyone away last night we worked an extra hour till six o'clock a bunch of the nepalese people ended up spending the night here they found a way to put them all up and then we saw them first thing this morning so um just a really efficient day <laughs> ear doctors eye doctors uh, one neurologist two rheumatologists my wife is a dentist, and then two Nepalese dentists here um, supporting as well. And then a load of volunteers. So much fun working with these monks. It's just a big affirmation of how meditative the Avita Yoga practice really is. I feel like I had such a heartfelt connection with these guys. You know, where the namaste it's as common as hello is in America. And more often than not, the hands are at the heart. It's just so kind and so gentle and so glowing. I think I'll do a little bit of yoga here for myself and see what kind of words come up as I recall my day. It's all blurred together because we, we get up at 6.30, breakfast at 7. We start seeing people at 8.00. There's an hour and 15 minute lunch break. And then we go till from one o'clock till five o'clock. So very full days, pretty exhausting, really. So I'm going to start on my belly. Some old wooden table that we've just been seeing people on. It's amazing how many people we've had in this tent because it starts to rain and We've had them packed in here while two of us are teaching some therapeutic yoga and lots of people just huddled around watching translators. Mm, feels good to let my spine extend. So the monks, because they sit in full Padmasana, for hours. Today, I learned from a monk who I really uh, befriended. He shared with me that he recently completed a seven month meditation. And I said, wow, seven months, how many hours a day did you meditate? He said, we, we start at five in the morning and we go till 10 at night for seven months.
And I must say, it must work because he was just a bundle of joy, just happy, peaceful. He's an artist. He shared some amazing sketches with me. And these monks are trained in English, Nepalese, Tibetan, and Hindi. Oh, and Sherpa. Sherpa has its own uh, language. It's kind of must be a subset of Nepalese. They're very, very bright. Such a joy to be around. And they really gravitated to our tent. They probably gravitate to all the tents. Okay. I taught that shape to a good number of monks because they spend so much time seated upright. And most of the Nepalese people we found are either working or resting or eating. You know, it's just a purely a functional day for them. And so very challenging to just to get them into a shape like this sometimes take two, three minutes, even with the translator. They just have no reference for moving in their bodies. And here I'm talking about the elder women and men, these, these beautiful Nepalese elders that you've seen lots of pictures of them. So bright, so colorful. Wow. Moving in their body for therapeutic self-care reasons is very foreign to them. And unfortunately, it shows. And I focused in probably 15 to 20 minute sessions, I focused on sharing three shapes, no more than that. But some of them really connected with it. Some of them I feel like I made a real difference. What's interesting about virasana, kneeling like this, almost every person can do this. In sukhasana, their knees almost all just relax all the way to the floor. Most of the people have some spinal issues, back pain. And while most of them can do virasana, sitting on their heels, the idea of remaining in it as a therapy for their knees was a bit of a breakthrough. I hope it was a breakthrough for them because they squat a lot, which as you know, is a, is a more upright version of virasana. And then the whole idea of befriending the pain. And that's a concept that that is universal, right? We just want to avoid the pain. And what makes the Vita so powerful is that we, we source the pain. We find it in the shapes. We find it in the movements, and then we befriend it. And that was a major connecting point with the, with the monks. I spent a lot of time like this today. All right. He's bent. Fingers interlocked and opening the palms toward the ceiling. Pressing the feet, moving the low back toward the floor. I mean, that right there would take three, four minutes to explain to some of the elders. We really reduced it, made it super simple. Yeah, this is good. There's just very little time. Most everybody is down in the in our gathering area where we gather around a big wood stove and and have our dinner, lunch and breakfast. And I've just lingered behind to have a little yoga and a little 
time to share this amazing experience because if I don't do it now, I won't do it. And what a gift to actually have a little willingness, a little dedication to carve out moments when traveling, even on a busy, you know, when we're at home, busy days, we just can carve out 20, 30 minutes. Give your joints some love, some compression they crave. Move a little closer to the stillness within the ultimate goal. All right, and I'm raising up. toward the ceiling, extending the elbows, broadening the shoulder blades. I'm going to release my fingers, open the palms, and lower back once more, thumbs touching and pressing. Press the thumbs. <laughs> Sorry, sneeze. weather's been pretty cold and quite cloudy. We've only had a few glimpses of the mountain peaks from here. We wake up in the clouds. We go to sleep in the clouds. There's usually a couple hours in the morning where it seems to clear off and we get a good view. Hmm. Now release the arms to the sides. Okay. Not sure if I'll have the opportunity to share again tomorrow night, but I'll do my best and, and keep sharing along the way. And I just really appreciate you and really appreciate being able to share this with you. Namaste.